Lord, and I thank you for today as well that you've brought us to a place where we have to cry out to you. Jesus, if the world's going to reset, would you please reset the church? Reset the body of Christ. Bring the ones who want to love you, truly love you, and worship you in spirit and truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Go to Psalm 2. Kiss the sun. Return. Kiss the sun. Come back to your first love. Psalm 2. Why do the nations rebel or uh, conspire? And the people's plot in vain. The kings of the earth take their stand. And the rulers conspire together against the Lord and against his anointed one, or Mashiach. Um, let us tear off their chains and free ourselves from their restraints. The one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord ridicules them. Then he speaks to them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath. Amen. I have consecrated my king on See on my holy mountain. I will declare the Lord's decree. And he said to me, You are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask of me and I will make the nations your inheritance and the ends of the earth your possession. You will break them with a rod of iron. You will shatter them like pottery. So now, kings, be wise. Receive instruction, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with reverential awe and rejoice with trembling. I'm going to say the alternate passage. Kiss the sun or he will be angry. I want you guys to focus on it, verse 12. They say pay homage to, but that sounds so... That's what I'm looking for. Conceptual. Kiss the sun. Thank you. And you will perish in your rebellion. For his anger may ignite at any moment. All those who take refuge in him are happy. The idea of kissing, I mean, all throughout the scripture shows about kissing and, and that it involves intimacy. So, you who are not married, you better not be kissing. But even still, there are holy kisses where there is still a sense of intimacy in Christ. So, uh, this message, as we were in worship, God was giving it to me. Um, I don't know what to share other than there are some words that came up. Psalm 2, the leaders are trying to keep us here. So we're in a really weird spot. I believe revival, in fact, I'm being encouraged to, to continue this. Guys, revival is on its way. This is part of the process. You guys are probably thinking, what? Revival is on its way. We are going to have life. We're going to have resurrection. Here's what's happening. If you, if you sort of keep in your mind, this is what the leaders are doing, okay? They're trying to keep us, what? What are they, uh, what's going on? The kings of the earth take their stand, their rulers conspire against the Lord. They, uh, the peoples are plotting in vain. Okay. So they're all plotting, conspiring. We got COVID vaccine, we got potential war in China. We have so many things. They're all conspiring. Here's the question and God is telling us on Yom Kippur, why does it trouble you? 
Why does it matter to you? When Jesus is on the cross, he said, it is finished. That is such a loaded statement. The governance of this world against us is over. Does that mean you can rebel against them? No. Romans 14 says, uh, 13, honor those who are in authority over you. By the same token, that assumes you're listening to the king and you're going before him. The only way you can get into his presence is if you're broken. Don't even think you have a right to get in there. You don't. The only right you have is the blood of Jesus, which is not yours. He gave, he, it's his. You enter by his blood. Well, how, it's not just a magical saying or phrase that you just conjure up. You need to know the Gospels. You need to know and read the Scripture. And sit still. Especially in the mornings. And reflect from the time Jesus was betrayed to the time he... Just, just look at what, what he did for you on that cross. Listen. What he did for you on that cross. Meditate on it. Meditate. And, and, and you know, that's why I highly recommend watching The Passion. Even if you're 10 years old. I highly recommend it. Parents, you have to make your own call. I believe the church, believers, need a new revelation of the majesty of God. We need a new demonstration of Christianity. I put out a message a little bit ago that the greatest miracle is a heart of stone being turned to a heart of flesh. That one who is walking dead turning to Jesus and serving him all the days of his life. It's Raven Hill saying, greatest miracles, God taking an unholy man from an unholy world, making him holy, taking him out of that unholy world, making him holy, putting him back in that unholy world, and keeping him holy, and making others holy. The last days mean that we, of all people, should live sacrificially, pouring out. So, the last days, after Jesus poured out the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, the phraseology of everybody was, we are in the last days, brothers. We're in the last days, we're in the last days, we're in the last days. Do you guys understand there is endless, empty prophesying? Want of prophecies? Nah, you'll get it. There's no lack. <laughs> Let me, let me be controversial here. The Christians are all plotting together. Well, what prophecy do you have? What prophecy do you have? Or having their denominational, doctrinal. Well, what do we need to keep people in the church? Keep, get people to church. I think what you need to do is tell them Jesus Christ and give the gospel the way it is. As it is. As tough as it is. I've heard statements. What's harder, being a Marine, being in the military, or being a Christian? And they will say, first and foremost, it's being a Christian. Most difficult thing. That's why true Christianity, following Jesus Christ, doing what he says, living poured out as he did, is not... It's not pleasant. It's not desired. But don't you see? The one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord ridicules them. What does Ephesians two six say? Let's go to. The, let's go there. Ephesians two verse six. This is critical to understanding our place. With, with our standing, with where we are at this time and place, this season, in this world's history. We've never seen anything like this. Together, okay, verse 4, but God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love that he had for us, 
made us alive with the Messiah, even though we were dead in trespasses. You are saved by grace. Okay, remember Psalm 2. The one thrown in heaven laughs, the Lord ridicules them. Together with Christ Jesus, he has also raised us up and seated us in the heavens. Do you understand that if Jesus laughs in the heavens at what the, is going on here, you guys should be laughing too and looking at it, you guys are a bunch of children. You guys should be looking at the world and saying you're a bunch of children. If we are in Jesus Christ, we with the Lord ought to laugh. What's here is a bunch of children demanding their own rights. Let me play a scenario for you. you ever be, be on a playground? No, it's my ball. No, it's my. It's, this is my team. This is my vaccine. This is my system. No, it's my body. It's my beliefs. Dude, do you understand you're playing into the devil's game? Do you understand the idiocy of it? This is stupid. Oh, it's my prophetic camp, and I've heard this. No, but our prophecies say Trump will win, or, 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 or this. Do you guys understand they've been saying endless empty prophesying for, since I was a... Before I was a believer, I used to watch these shows. Jack Van Eypen, I'm not knocking him. He's with the Lord. They love Jesus. They did what they felt was right. But looking back, I always thought it was weird. They treated, hey, you know, like this is serious business. We got stuff going on, but somehow we missed the message. Look at what's happening in the world. They're working on the third temple and this, and the Antichrist is going to come on the stage. Guys, that was 30 years ago. I used to watch it as a kid. My parents never knew what I was watching. And still, they beat the same drum. The problem is we forgot the purpose of the message. It's Jesus Christ. There are events in the world, and it is coming. Christ is coming. We are literally in the last days. There is an urgency. It will come to you, because what will happen is you're going to die. Somebody's going to get your stuff. And you're going to be in a place you don't want to be. The devil has his working while people, while, while people suffer. We in America are so concerned about our bodies and our health. You know, we forget. There's a reason why we're here. God has sincerely blessed us. Blessed this nation. He says, you guys have not done what you're supposed to do. This country was meant to be a light because of the people that are in it. I'm not getting political. I hope you guys understand that. God brought you you, 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 out of darkness into his marvelous light. He has given you riches. We saw that in Ephesians, by the riches of his grace. For what purpose? Not for yourself. Not for this time. Not for your own comfort. We should be laughing and telling others to kiss the sun. Our lives, and I may get into this tomorrow, Shabbat, the purpose is not for religion. So that you say, hey, look, I'm a Christian. I have a Jesus bumper sticker. Uh, you know, I have a little bracelet that says, what would Jesus do? No. James 1.27, pure and undefiled religion before our God and Father says. Now, the word of religion, King James, is literally translated the physical expression of of your fear of God. It's this. Look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. That means don't do the world's things. Don't play the world's game. And sadly, with Christendom, they're playing into all is well, all is well. Look at, read Jeremiah, you'll understand. Many prophets prophesying saying, thus saith the Lord when I've said no such thing. That's also Isaiah. Guys, we need to return. Return to what? Intimacy with Jesus. And from there, we can have a better view of how to react. We need to be a people that live sacrificially 
enough with religion. Enough with, well, the Bible says we need to take this day off, and if we're not doing it, what? You're condemned? Romans 8 says there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. You need to listen to what he says. You need to listen to what he tells you. You need to do as he says. And if he tells you, go into foreign lands and eat what's set before you, do and, and share with them. You guys know what it is. It's right there. Everybody's conspiring. The devil's all got them in a tailspin. What are we doing? What are we doing? Are we just trying to play it safe and, well, we'll just wait till nobody comes to us. Do you guys understand that's sin? That's the, one of the three servants. The servants, he's a servant of the master. That means he has a master and the master gave him talents. And he says, well, I was afraid. So what? I hid your talent. That's a life's wage. Do you understand that the talent is a life's wage? He gave you one life to live. What? He squandered it. You hit it. You didn't even give it a chance. Get back to that closet of prayer. Get back to the Lord. Kiss the son lest he'd be angry. You guys have been kissing sound. Guys, let's not play into the devil's game. Worrying about this mark, that mark of the beast, this situation. Well, look what's happening here. If you know what, if you spent time with the Lord, you'd get so much goodness. All the things of this, this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. Yeah. Amen. Why care? Keep, just keep quiet in the sense of aspire to live quietly. That's 1 Thessalonians 4. Doing work with your own hands, minding your own affairs. But by the same token, live pouring out. If the Holy Spirit's in you, you know what's right. Keep seeking Him. Don't try to figure it out. Keep walking. Keep praising. Stay away from the media. God, stay away from it. It'll kill you. If there's something you need to know, it's take tornado warning. Okay. Foreign army invading Minnesota. They're down the road. Okay, go get the guns. Or whatever. I don't know. The purpose of the media that we found is to do what Psalm 2 is happening. Look what this nation is conspiring to do. Look what they're plotting. Who cares? Jesus said, well, what about this disciple? Excuse me, Peter to Jesus. What about this disciple? And he said, what does it matter to you if I have him remain until I come back? You follow me. That's the call of the gospel. You follow. Stay away from distractions. And it's getting worse. It is getting worse. Preach the gospel. You will have words to speak in that hour. If you are focused in him, you preach the gospel to yourself. You guys got to preach the gospel to yourself every day, all the time. You will be ready to preach the gospel to others. If you prepare for the battle, before the battle, you'll be ready at the battle. If you prepare for worst case scenario, you'll be ready for it. Preach the gospel to yourself. The worst case scenario is you come in front of a person and you're like, uh, 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 uh. You not know what to say. I pray that you learn from those experiences because that's grace. Be ready for it. You'll be asked to, you'll be asked to give an account for your faith. Be it before somebody who wants to cut your head off or somebody who just wants to give you a dirty look. Guys, be ready. Preach the gospel to yourself and pour out. Even though the world is having their heyday one with another. While they're distracted, you go over there and you start preaching the gospel to somebody who will listen. Scam caller calls you, you preach the gospel to them.
Happened to me the other day. Social Security Administration scam. I started preaching the gospel. He says, I'm tired of this stinking job. I said, okay. If you meant everything you said, you love Jesus. Yes, I gave Jesus everything. I'm tired of this stinking job. Well, then you tell, well, then you say, Jesus, I'm running to you, and I want you to hang up the phone and, and to prove that you're doing it. Jesus, I'm running to you. Click. And he hung up the phone. <laughs> Guys, get ready to stand in the fire. Whether it's a dirty look, or it's ISIS, or it's a state, doesn't matter. If you are preaching the gospel to yourself, you'll be ready. Amen? Amen. Father, thank you for your word. Father, let us always be ready to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Abba, may we know that we are in the judgment seat of Christ right now, standing before him now. You tell us it's the last days. Father, we should be ready as if we are to die now. Father, have mercy on your church on your body, on those who take the name of Christ falsely. Have mercy. Father, have mercy on us. May we always be ready to give an account for our faith and for our life before you and before men. Let us be spotless and blameless before a, this wicked generation. Let us shine as lights because you are the light, Jesus. Help us to sit in the heavens and laugh and just say, you're a bunch of children, and let me go to the child that's neglected. Lord, let us reach out to the poor. Let us know how to preach the gospel that you came to save and to live inside of us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.